I bought a QD OLED TV and we're going to take it apart today. Today we're taking apart a QD OLED Samsung S95B. This is the newest technology from Samsung where quantum dots are used as a color converter on a blue OLED backlight. So we're taking apart this 55 inch QD OLED today. <clears throat> um, comes nicely packaged, of course. A lot of warnings on how to handle it and not to break it. And pretty sturdy stand I put together here and attached to the back of the TV. I'm really interested in this TV because it's the first of its kind to implement QD technology with OLED technology. Got some nice clips here to hold the stand on the back of the TV. And of course, the ever so satisfying removal of the protective film on the front to reveal the QD OLED display. Now, lots of other people have done uh, measurements on the front of screen and looking at brightness and viewing angle and all that stuff. I'm gonna go a little bit deeper uh, and look at the actual spectral analysis, which to me is more interesting. So here's the tools I'm gonna use today. I've got a UV flashlight. I've got a blue filter. These are just blue blocking glasses. They reduce a lot of the light of the UV in blue. So that can be helpful when we're doing our measurements. I've got a loop, a couple of loops here. Uh, these loops also have lights integrated within them, both white and blue or UV, which especially when you're using quantum dots can be helpful. A mini spectrometer from Avantes, and I also have a microscope that you're not seeing here. So here I'm feeding the TV a test pattern of pure green, red, and blue from my laptop. And here as we look close up at the pixel structure of the green area, you can see predominantly green, but there does appear to be a little bit of red coming through there as well, which is interesting. And if we look at the white area between the red and green, you can see the white is composed of all three components, red, green, and blue. The green is, again, predominantly the green subpixel. Red is predominantly the red. But again, even in the red subpixel, you see a little bit of green lit up as well. And finally, with the blue area, this should be just blue. And it mostly is, but again, there's a little bit of color coming from the red, it looks like, in that blue area. So I found this really interesting that there was maybe more to the colors than just the pure reds, greens, and blues. And here's a close-up of the white. It's what you'd expect, red, green, blue, all lit up. Um, so the color from the red and green is coming from the QDs. Here's red, white, and blue. And again, you can see in the red area, a little bit of green, and in the blue area, maybe a little bit of red that's lit up there. So I had to dig deeper into this because this was interesting to me. And there's the green, close-up of the green, area and definitely there's some red going on there and i was um, turned on to a trick here by a friend where you can measure a thumbnail compared to a full screen image and they actually can look different because of the way the video compresses it and in the full screen image we see that we have this red underlying the green and in the thumbnail image we don't it's just the green lit up so this is a nice little workaround and we can use this to look at the optical spectrum. So here we've got blue, green, and red, compressed, which is full screen, and native, which is just that thumbnail. And in the compressed graphic, you can see they all have a little bit of shoulder peaks from the other colors, especially the green subpixel. But in the native, we get pure blue, green, and red. So what's happening here is there is an impact on color gamut. There's a compression of the color gamut to near DCI-P3 because that's what the videos come in and that's, uh, that's what they know how to handle. But the native color gamut is actually broader, um, but the TV compresses that to be in a gamut that, uh, that it knows how to handle. So I thought that was really interesting to see that, that, that color changes and how that gamut is compressed um, within the software. So here's what we're going to start to take apart. Um, the structure here is a little bit of a cartoon graphic. It's not to scale. 
we're going to take apart the electronics first, or at least expose the electronics in the back of the TV. Um, this was a little more difficult than I expected. There's some clips on here that, um, that really gave me a hard time. So I had to get in there and, and really pry apart these clips to pop this back panel off, but was finally successful in doing this. And at this point, the TV is still in, in good operating shape, I believe. My goal was to try to keep it in operating shape as I took it apart, but as you'll see, eventually I, I did manage to ruin it. So three main components here in the back. We've got the main board, uh, TCON board, and power supply. There's also speakers and receiver for the remote and everything like that. Um, so that's the electronics on the back that's connected to this metal back. And, and the next goal here is to remove this bezel around the edge so we can get into the guts of the TV and see where the action is really happening. That's where I think it gets interesting, where the light is generated and the color is converted from blue to red and green. So this bezel, if you can even call it that, um, this bezel is a metal bezel fit between the metal frame of the TV and then the, the active component, the OLED and QD. Really had to pull this out with some pliers. There's a nice adhesive on there, as you can see. It was wedged right in there all the way around the TV. Um, here's a close up of what that looks like. You can see the adhesive that I had to pull off as I did that. So now we've removed that bezel and next is remove that metal back. The metal back contains, of course, the electronics behind it. There's a few ribbon cables and things to disconnect here. Um, but for the most part, this back is just a separate piece. The problem I ran into was that it's connected with an adhesive. Uh, and this was difficult to see the first time I tried to pry this apart, which did end up cracking some of the screen. But I was finally able to work this adhesive loose and did end up getting into the guts of the TV. Here, I finally have it separated and can flip the metal back separate from the active component. So here you can see some more electronics. And, and if you look closely, you'll see the areas where as I tried to pry this apart, there was an adhesive holding that metal back on. And that was the only thing holding it on in the end. Um, and it did end up cracking a few spots here. So at this point, I don't think the TV is functional anymore. I'm not even trying to plug it in. Yeah, there's a good crack here. <clears throat> but it did have this interesting layer before we got to the OLED, which is what I think is a uh, thermally conductive material. It's, it's flexible, almost soft, but it's strongly adhered to the OLED backplane. And uh, you can see it's just kind of this plastic encased material. Again, it's kind of like foamy rubber almost. Um, so I have that label here in purple as heat sink. And I could get at this and kind of peel it back, but man, it was not easy. Uh, it really wanted to stick to the back of the OLED. So I've got to believe this is to remove heat. As we all know, OLEDs are sensitive to degradation, burn-in, and adding a layer like this of thermally conductive material, I would assume helps draw away some of the heat and make the OLED last longer. So now we're into the blue OLED and the QD color converter. We have that heat sink completely removed. Uh, and now we can look at kind of some cracked areas between the OLED and the QLED and we'll start to see what's actually going on here. So here I'll remove some of those cracked OLED pieces. So that's, that's the action right there. That's where the blue light is created in, those, in that OLED backplane and it's very, very thin. And we're going to remove that and look at the QD layer here. If we light it up with a UV flashlight, you can see that this material does kind of glow. You can see some red and green spots illuminating there. You can also see electronics at the OLED backplane. And we can look at a close up here of where this panel has separated between the QD component and the OLED component. These are fused together in the manufacturing process, but they're actually pretty weak connection there and they separate quite easily between that QD front plane and the OLED back plane. I found that these separated easily. Here I'm illuminating the pixels with a UV light and you can see the red and the green from the quantum dot emission quite well. 
Uh, blue you don't see as well because blue is just a scattering agent and there's no uh, quantum dot there. And then with white light, you can see all three colors. I'm planning a second video where I get really deep into the color conversion process, the optical properties, the blue OLED, and the spectral analysis of these, as well as some interesting observations. So I hope you'll subscribe and stick around for that video. Thanks for watching.